So uh, this is a continuation of the test. I installed Windows 10 IoT L LTSC on it, and this uh, computer is idling at 20 watts with one SSD drive installed. Next, I'm going to be putting these 28 terabyte Seagate factory research drives. I have uh, three of them. We're going to see what the power level is with three drives in there, and then we'll continue from there. This looks like to be a semi toolless design. You see over here, there's little things over here that apparently go into the drive over here. And you have a little center screw that you screw onto here. So I just wanted to point that out. The drive seems to be staying in place with it, but I would still put the screw in there. You know what? Uh, since the screws didn't come in there and it looks like it's very much firm in the thing i'm just gonna pop it in like that that should be i would say this is a toolless installation which is definitely a plus so it just slides in like this or bunk okay now we just turn it on interesting so the first caddy has the uh NVMe SSDs, this is on boot up, it's taking 75 watts from the wall. Boot up time might be a little bit slow, but once it boots up, it's kind of fine. Um, so it was 55 watts, 67, and now it's time to activate the drive. Let's do format, format, create hard disks, partitions, bunk disk one. New simple volume. Let's do this. Assign drive letter. I'm going to do letter M. You know what? I'm just gonna yeah, M sounds good. Uh M. I'm gonna call it zero one. Perform quick format. Enable for the concussions. Bang. So that's how you get the disk in there. Now it's taking 46 boots. AMD software. Now, we are taking 54, 42 watts. Um, if I turn off the screen, uh, how do I turn it off? Okay, screen off. So it looks like it's taking 41 watts, 35 watts at idle. Now back to 40 watts because it's taking the power from the uh, okay just turn off the screen which was easier to just turn off the screen like that okay let's just disconnect that bang so what was idling at uh, 28 watts with one drive installed now it's 29 watts so 21 so it's eight watts for the drive. Now let's get another drive in there. So now with two SATA drives, the boot NVMe, you see there's two, two already two lights in, now it's at 36 watts. So it looks like each SATA drive is taking about eight watts. So we went from 20 or maybe nine watts. Let's eight, let's just go on the safe side, nine watts. But maybe more like 8 watts. Because you see it's 36 now. With two drives. We were doing a base of... Mm, so between 8 and 9 watts. Now let's see with uh, three drives. So on boot, we're getting 72, 73. The drives are spinning up. Nothing really major is happening. Um... I got these 28 uh, um, terabyte refurbished drives. Now we're up to 93 watts on boot.
Now let me format it and we'll see what it's like on after that. So with three SATA ATB drives, we're getting about 45 watts idling consumption with three drives. Perhaps maybe in Windows, the drive will spin down. However, I didn't give it enough time for that. So factor that into your calculations. However, you see that um, as being important because there's probably a Windows setting or probably in Linux is probably a setting too uh, to uh, lower the wattage. So three drives is 46 watts. So I just did an extrapolation because I had three drives to put in there. Um, this is where the power level is going to be with six SATA drives and one SATA SSD on the inside. I'm not going to put any NVMEs because that's going to make day too long for uh, the video. I just figured you guys might might be interested in what we're talking about power levels. Um, to expect probably these drives will spin down chances are um, this guy over here I also have the WTR uh, Pro here it's a four bay and I have one drive in here and uh, I think with one drive it was also doing about 29 watts so whether you get the WTR Pro or this one and the WTR Pro actually came with some screws to put onto the sides of the drive to get it in there. Um, I just wanted to do the extrapolation over here uh, so that you guys, if you're shopping around, uh, getting these uh, NASs or this drive, what to expect with the capacity. However, if we're talking about uh, what capacity is for this 73 watt hours an hour would be so this is 28 so if they're assuming they're all 28 terabyte drives so then it would be 56 and then it would be 28 so 64 so 74 uh do another 28 82 102 uh, another 28 is 130 and 158 so technically for the 73 watts an hour you could have a 158 terabyte drive nas plus if we populate all the other ones so assuming the uh the ssds so ssds let's say they take three watts each let's assume that and we could add four more so four more so that's another 12 watts so we're talking about 85 watts total and then we could add another 32 32 terabytes kind of wait eight times four eight times oh so we got 158 terabytes just SATA storage and then we have 32 actually 40 we could do 40 terabytes of ssd storage so it's basically five times ATB drives equals 40 terabytes of storage. So if we just round it up to, let's say, 95 watts, you could have 40 terabytes plus 158. So almost 200 TB theoretical at 85 watts um using this i think this is, is this the wtr max i think it is so um that's really cool capacity so the first drive is going to run the fastest obviously this this idle one uh with this and then combine together 85 watt draw um 85 so 85 times 24 so we're talking about uh let's say 85 times 10 is 850 watts uh 60 so 1700 
plus another seventeen hundred plus eighty five one seventy plus three forty. So it's about two kilowatts a day. Two kilowatts or two point five, let's say. Mm, I would say about two kilowatts a day. Two kilowatts a day, and if you have thirty cents. 30 cents a kilowatt hour this this nas would run about 60 60 cents a day 60 cents a day for almost 200 terabytes of theoretical storage um yeah so that's the power levels of this nas that i got thus far there's probably power savings if you get it to spin down the drives however let's assume that you never spin them down and this is at the high end point because the, the system was at idle and this is probably the way it's gonna be most of the time until you're accessing, accessing your data. Um, perhaps maybe on Linux it's better power operation, maybe on Windows it is, I have no clue. I'm just putting out this video for you guys to learn about this. The 28 terabyte drives that I installed, I got them on Amazon. I'm gonna send you, give you an affiliate link that in case you were buying drives anyway, I recommend getting them on Amazon because you can return them easily. They come in a nice little box. Uh, they say this stuff, Amazon renewed or something. Uh, something, something, something. Thanks for shopping. You're covered with your new guarantees. Give us a call, better planet, blah, 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 blah. So uh, I think about $350 a, a thing. They, they were like packaged up very professionally. Uh, some people do server part deals, but looking at both of them, it looks like the prices are the same. So, 85, 90 watts. So, let's say if it's 95 or let's say 100. Let's say it's 100 watts, right? Running 24-7, that's 100 times 24 hours, 2.4 kilowatts. So, 60 cents to a dollar a day. I mean... Uh, for $30 a month can you afford this thing and then also in my previous review I said that you could actually do solar power so you could actually budget this information for your solar power uh, to figure out how powerful you can make your system okay friends I hope you enjoyed the video thumb up subscribe put your comments down below and I was wondering like what you guys think like um, is this a really cool NAS? I'm just setting it up right now. Uh, it's been so snappy, it's been really great. So the tip that I could give you is archive.org, you could find IOT Windows 10 LTSC, and then there's also a checker. Check out my how to install guide. Uh, I installed it on the Surface Pro, it worked fine. And from the website where I bought it, uh, the key, I uh, link you to another YouTuber that showed me how to do it and it activated fine. What's interesting with this one, uh, it didn't even ask me for a key. Windows 10 IoT LTSC was activated for free out the box. So chances are maybe if you have a Windows 10 Pro license on it, because I think it said something that came with a Windows 10 Pro license, maybe it doesn't really care which one. It said activated with a digital license and uh, so I technically didn't need to buy a second key for this guy, um, which is kind of cool. Uh, let's see. And so first thing, so IoT, LTSC, and then uh, I connected uh, wired ethernet uh, to it. If your card doesn't get detected, get a few different ethernet dongles. Usually a gigabit gets connected by Windows 10 automatically, gets detected. Uh, download, go to drivereasy.com install all the drivers it stores really nice uh next go to 8845 hs uh driver so you could get the graphics driver for it and i would say it's been very snappy and um, how i'm using it personally is that i like connecting over a remote desktop connection from my main desktop pc so this way i could put this guy in the closet and connect remotely and uh, run my apps connected directly to it. Um, I was watching some videos about Twingate. 
uh, setting up connections to your start to your local network via TwinGate, which sounds like a very, very great opportunity. Okay, friends, I hope you found this information useful. Um, use the links in case you were buying anything anyway, or if not, that's fine too. I do appreciate the thumbs up. I do appreciate the comments and I do appreciate uh you guys watching because i'll be doing this anyway and at least now i get to do it with friends talk soon bye